Hey, welcome to CMN Less Than 10, a resource produced by the Church Multiplication Network. It's guaranteed to be less than 10 minutes. My friend, Pastor Zach Green here. We're gonna be held accountable. We're gonna, we're gonna make this happen. There's gonna be a timer superimposed on the screen. So if we are uh, past time, it's gonna just cut off. But uh, Pastor Zach is the staff pastor, a staff pastor, one of uh, many pastors here at, at Summit Park Church in Lee Summit, Missouri. That's right. And uh, nailed it near Kansas City. And uh, we're excited to talk today about managing multiple roles. Why don't you give me a journey? Is how many roles you've had? That's great. And then what are the current ones that you oversee here yeah, at the church? Yeah, absolutely. So came on staff as the students pastor uh, here at the church, and then uh, that uh, kind of morphed into the family life role, uh, overseeing kids and students. And as a part of that. Uh, we got a, a lot of young adults here mm-hmm. at the church, and so we started a young adult ministry as well. So the fam- the student and family life director role uh, encompassed kids, students, and then all the way up to our young adult uh, range, which we, we use the 18 to 35 right, role right. for the young adults. And then uh, as that morphed and, and continued to grow, one of our pastors is going to plant a church. It's going to be our first church plant as as a church, and we're really excited about it. And so... That gave me the opportunity as well to, to scoot into the our, our South Campus, which is where we're at right now, right. Uh, the campus pastor here. So, so you went from just students, yep. then to students and kids, yep. then students, kids, young adults, That's it. and then all three together, yep. and now also a campus. That's it. So we're That's looking right. at four roles when initially it started as one. That's right. And so you've grown from one role to four roles. What has been the biggest thing? Uh, Thing that you've learned, the most impactful thing that you've learned about learning to manage these four things? I think that the biggest thing that's been really beneficial for me to take a hold on uh, early on in, in understanding when you're grasping new roles is there are so many things that need to be done. And I heard a mm-hmm. quote the other day that ministry is a monster and mm-hmm. it will eat whatever you feed it. So right. you can you could spend 70 hours a week, 80 hours a week, right. 90 hours a week. Uh, on ministry, and it could all sure. be beneficial things. And especially when you have multiple roles, if you want every single one of your roles to get better, you say, man, we, we've we got a culture of improvement maybe you have at your right. church, uh, right. where you're saying, I reserve the right to get smarter, I reserve the right to get better. Right. Then you're always looking at tweaking things. Right. Then you could spend all of your time, uh, and you could always spend more time doing things. And so uh, ministry is one of those things that you can especially grasping more roles, you can always do more. Right. And so uh, I think the biggest thing that I've learned in taking on new roles is I can't do anything. If, if I can be a leader who genuinely doesn't do anything and also leads leaders who don't do anything, but, uh, but we're grasping right. onto the Ephesians 4 model of, of Christ giving some to be pastors, right. apostles, teachers, to equip the saints right. for works of the ministry, not to do. And so, uh, and so as, as somebody who I want to see something happen a certain way, right. and I, I know that we have a culture, we have an understanding and a vision for the church at multiple campuses to do things a certain way, well then sometimes you think you can, you're the only one who can do that, right. you're the only one who can make that happen. And I would say there are some circumstances where that's true Sure. at, sure. at the very beginning. That's true. You, you do need to kind of roll up your sleeves and do it. Right. But you want to be, begin to, to kind of... St- Go higher, separate yourself a little bit more. How is the trust level between you and your senior pastor? Yeah. Has that changed at all? Like the way he trusted you as a student pastor has to be different than the way he's trusting you now with multiple roles. Absolutely. Well, I think the understanding is ministry, it flows out of relationships, right? And in relationships, they they take time is what one of my mentors told me. And uh, so as I've spent more time with him Mm -hmm. uh, and learning from him, so you've got, you've got obviously at the priority of all, the, all that you do, what would Jesus do? you got the WWJD. Right, right, right. But I think love it. as a staff pastor, you really do have to put in, in your ministry leadership, what would, now my lead pastor's name is Scott, what would, what would Scott, Scott do? do? Right. WWSD, what would right, he do? Right, And it's really good. anything that's given to me, I am using that as the filter. As the filter. Wow. Um, and now not, he's, he's not Jesus. Sure. But, He's the leader. Right. Jesus so, did give him the vision. Right. He did. Right. That's exactly it. And, right. and now, 
as I've been given things, I just want to say, man, I want to be faithful to this role. Right. And if I can be faithful to this role, that I'm, I'm going to set aside my opinions because that's what we have to do. We have to right. set aside our opinions right. and say, I'm going to uh, allow this this piece of my ministry. This is just fish and loaves. This is such a right. small aspect of the kingdom. Right. But it's been entrusted to me. So I'm going to say, what would Jesus do? What would Scott do? And, right. and then I'm just going to allow that to funnel everything that I do. That's and great. as that's happened, Scott has seen, okay, now that that is the way that that we want to do it here. Right, so it's right. it's not it's not us and them. It's not that's how they do it over right, here. Right, right. This is how we do it. Right. And, I, really and I just good. try and allow that to to lead in everything we do. Now with this many roles and this many teams and I'm guessing lots of volunteers. That's it. Um, what what is your primary communication tool getting real practical and granular how are you communicating with all these teams across yep. different demands you know hey you have to set up for this event and yep. you guys have to be prepared for this and right. this follow up for this thing how are you getting the information out yep that's great well uh as as volunteers are coming on uh, I love when I see an iPhone in the hand because right. what I can do is I can make a, a group message uh, with the iMessage and, and I try to do that as much as possible. When that's not, that that is honestly the way that I try and do it. I'll even title the group message. I'll use emojis like let it right, let it be right, fun, right, interactive. Right. When that's not the case, we, we will use things like GroupMe okay. and, and different messaging devices. And then from there, we actually do, uh, we use Planning Center for a lot of gotcha. um, for a lot of communication. A lot of emails go out through there, scheduling goes through that's there. That's it. Awesome, yep. awesome. Yep. So yeah. um, when, when you come up against conflict, um, maybe across teams, like they're getting more attention than their, or their budget. A lot of times it's a budget for conflict, sure, right? For sure, for sure. You know, like youth ministry got this, but kids ministry needs this. Um, how are you handling conflict resolution? How are you developing leaders to handle conflict resolution? That's good. Um, at, at this stage in the ministry? You know, I try and say, man, guys, we're all on the same team and, and allowing there to be some crossover. So, right. man, let's bring a kid's guy into a student's meeting. Let's oh, bring a good. student's guy into a kid's meeting and, and let's let them understand that we are all on the same team. Right. So it doesn't feel so siloed or so individualized. Right. Like, you know, there's, there's that... A picture of instead of an apartment building, we're all in one big house, right? Like right, we're, it, right. it's it's the house that we're in together, and uh, and whether it be resources, whether it be volunteers, right. like hey, let's share, right. let's share right. here. If there can be a little bit of give here, a little bit of take here, right. let's all take that on together and say we are a team. Now I think that I have the ability to do that, and if you're a staff pastor that has multiple roles, man. You can take that and use that to your advantage and say, we're all one team and this right, is great. Right. We're all better together anyway. If this department has five volunteers and this department has 28 volunteers, right. now you've got 33 volunteers that's a team together. Right, right. Really trying mass. to unify, you're one of your main roles is really trying to unify everyone across Everybody. multiple ministries. That's right. That's great. Well, this has been so helpful. Maybe uh, with a one minute left on the clock, what would you say to a staff pastor who's struggling right now, feels overwhelmed with multiple roles, feels like they've reached their lid, their capacity? How would you encourage them as we close out our time? I would say that there's always going to be somebody that you don't feel is ready for the next level. Mm -hmm. And uh, Craig Rochelle has actually gone down to the 50% model. If something mm -hmm. can do something 50% as well as you can, just give it to them. That's and it great. can be really hard. You, you, like, you wanna keep things close to the chest to do them well. I would say trust your people and then coach your people. That's great. Give it to them, follow up, coach them, and love them through it. Your goal is to do nothing. Your goal is to raise up leaders and volunteers who are doing nothing so that they can do only the things that they can do and you're allowing people to find their purpose in your ministry. That's great. Pastor Zach, thank you for your time. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of CMN Less Than 10. We'll see you next time.